You could literally buy 10 of these for the price of this. All right, just cracked open a fresh gram of live rosin from Grape Dot. This strain is called the Candy, buttered up on me. When it's buttered up like this, it's such a bitch to get it onto the dabber, but it makes it so much easier to actually dose out how much you're getting. When it's all goopy, I really have no idea how much I'm really getting. All right, let's get a dab in. All right, while I wait for it to cool down, this is my new heady I just got. It's made by the artist Dirty Bee Glass. I named it Takashi for obvious reasons. Obviously rocking a clout banger. All right, you guys, first dab of the candy. Cheers. has a super sweet and gassy taste to it. That's nice. Nothing like some live rosin to start the day. So as you guys know, heady glass usually costs a little bit more than your standard production pieces or your import glass because it takes a genuine artist to come up with the idea to make something like this to actually create it and get it done. Like this is not simple. And this is pretty much a one of a kind piece. He could try to make another piece like this or of the same style, but there's probably not gonna be another one exactly like this again. That being said, it was originally priced at $1,600, which is way too much money to spend on a rig for most people. Me included. I'm never gonna drop $1,600 on a rig. If you see me with a $1,600 rig, it's because I got it for less than $1,600. And don't get me wrong, I love American glass art. I do truly think it's one of the most unique forms of art. And I truly do enjoy smoking high in glass, but I have to ask myself, is spending $1,600 on a piece worth it? Like if I was going to take a dab out of this American piece or this piece that was made in China, is there really much of a difference in the high? There will be a little bit of a difference in quality of the actual glass, but besides that, there's really not that much of a difference. I've seen a million people tell me support American, don't use that Chinese bullshit, while they're wearing a shirt that was made in China, a phone that was made in China, their shoes were made in China, their car was made in China. It's like, bro, if you're gonna have that energy, keep that across the board. You can't drive a Toyota and tell me to buy American. People, man. But I'm gonna take another dab. And the next strain I'm gonna smoke is this Goji OG from Moxie. Definitely one of my favorite Moxie strains. Looks beautiful. Tastes delicious. Get your eyes, fuck. What else could you ask for? Oh yeah, we're gonna do a close up on this hit. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> this is some fire. I love the function of this piece. When it's a high quality, unique piece like this, I totally understand supporting American, paying the high price for it. But I feel like a lot of American artists overcharge for the glass that they actually make. Now I get the glass expensive, you gotta pay the bills. And I'm sure there's someone that will buy that glass, but I'm not gonna be that guy usually. But like, if you wanna take a dab out of a giraffe or something unique, you gotta fucking cut the check for that. And I get that. And this rig has a much better function than most rigs do. Typically American rigs will have a better function than an import rig, but I've had some American rigs that hit like shit and I've had some import rigs that hit amazingly. So it really depends on the actual rig itself. If you want a recycler with a really good drain, you should buy an American piece. It's gonna have a much better drain, it's just gonna be much more consistent than the mass-produced rigs that are coming out of China. And a rig like this, not only does it have a good function, it's very durable. The day I got this, I put it down, I swear to God, and like, I don't know what I did, but I fumbled and knocked it over face forward. And as soon as it happened, I was like, fuck, there goes that rig, like there's no way something didn't fucking break. And I was looking at the nose, I was looking at the ears, everything, nothing was even cracked. But let's not forget, this is still made out of glass, it can break. And once that piece breaks, that thousand dollar investment is basically worthless. If you're looking at buying glass as like an investment, there's definitely wiser ways to spend your money. Like, unless you're in the cannabis industry, trapping weed, or just like really want to flex on your stoner friends, like there's really no point to buy American glass. That's this expensive at least. But like, I get it. I'm in the cannabis industry to an extent. I have a lot of friends that smoke weed. 
I love to whip out an American piece when they come over and have a really nice fun smoke session. Like I smoke with a lot of people so sometimes it's fun to whip out a nice rig but I don't see the point of having every rig be an American rig. Like I love having this rig just as much to be honest and this rig was a tenth of the price. You could literally buy 10 of these for the price of this. But I didn't even pay the retail price on this. I got it a lot cheaper. This rig was sitting at the store for such a long time. I'm pretty sure this piece was made in 2014. So it's about six years old and it had never been hit until last week. It was just sitting there collecting dust. So the store owner is honestly willing to get rid of it for anything at that point. And there's a couple things wrong with this piece. Like it's a male joint, so that makes it very unappealing to a lot of people, especially if you're spending over a thousand dollars on a piece. You're typically not going to want it to have a male joint. And that's how you could tell this was made in 2014. Like no glass artist is dumb enough to put a male joint on a piece that they want to price at this price point. But I've noticed that Instagram really fucked up the glass market for a lot of head shops. It used to be if I wanted to go buy a Dirty V piece, I had no option but to go to a head shop and buy it from them. So if it was priced at 1600, the store probably bought it for like 800 to 1000 and that's how they came up with that price point. And they're able to get it at that price because they're buying five or six at a time. So there's always a shop to be the middleman. But ever since these artists needed to make an Instagram account, there wasn't really a need to have the middleman, which is totally fine. I love online marketing. I totally support that. But the issue is what a lot of artists were doing was they would sell their glass for pretty much like a little bit over wholesale. So let's say that the piece at the store is worth $300 they sold it to the store for 150. If you hit that dude up on Instagram, he'd probably sell it to you for 200. So a lot of people started to learn this and they were like, what's the point of going to a shop and paying the extra money when I could just have like a personal one-on-one -on -one experience with the artist and actually get it from them. It's pretty cool to do it that way, honestly. You get to like actually talk to the person that's making the piece. It gives the piece a little bit more personality in my opinion but it really fucked up the American glass head shop market. It would be one thing if glass artists like stuck to their retail prices online all the time, but they really don't. If you don't have a good business mind and someone's messaging you offering you $200 for a piece that you typically wholesale for 150, it might sound like a great deal, but really what you're doing is potentially losing that wholesale customer. Because now the guy that bought the rig for $200 is now a direct customer from you instead of a customer of the head shop. So now their pieces are just sitting, which means they're not gonna buy more pieces from you. If the pieces they buy from you just sit on the shelf, they're not gonna buy more. Why waste their money if it didn't work out the last time? So if these guys, when they build up a fan base, start selling their pieces on Instagram left and right, nobody's going to the head shop to buy it. So then you can go to the store and be like, hey, I see that that piece has been sitting there for over a year. I'll give you what you paid for it. And half the time they're gonna be like, deal, we're tired of looking at it. Ooh, I'm lit. I don't even know if that made sense. And I don't even know if I'm right. This is just like something I've observed. I feel like now more than ever, anytime I go to a head shop, there's so much more import glass in American. It's partially because there's better pricing on that, but it's also because that's what people are buying. Blame the internet. Next, taking a dab on this nerd dog from Laser Cat. Look how fire that looks. It's like a cheesy orangey smell. It's really fucking unique. I really don't even know how to describe it, but every time I dab it, I like it more than the time before. But I am really happy to have this rig in my collection. It's fucking beautiful, super unique. And I love calling it Takashi. I wish it was rainbow. That would be extra funny. Let's go in on this nerd dog. <laughs> Fucking camera cut out on me. God, that's so smooth. My camera cuts out every 16 minutes. So if I don't keep an eye out for it, it'll just cut off on me mid dab, like just now. But you're just not gonna find a piece like this made in China. It's just too unique. If they were to make a piece that looks like this, it's not gonna have good function. And it's not gonna look right. The eyes are gonna be looking all crooked and stuff. Like, look at the symmetry. It is perfect. The rat looks like it's looking right at you right now. If you're watching this video, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment for me and giving me a Q&A question, if you have one. I'm trying to do a YouTube Q&A where all the questions actually come from YouTube. I usually pull them from my Snapchat, but I think this time I'm gonna pull them all from YouTube. But if you wanna follow me on Snapchat, you can check out this snap code right here. 
Also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at popcorn. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's popcorn TV. And make sure you subscribe, bro. I got a lot more videos on the way. But that's all I really have to say about American Glass, you guys. I'm glad I didn't have to pay the retail price for it, and I'm glad it's in my collection, so I'm a happy guy. But I say we take one more dab of this nerd dog because the last video fucked up. Make sure you click like if you made it this far. If you watched the whole video, you definitely enjoyed it. Look at the color of that, bro. It is so pure. And people still message me all the time asking me how I keep my bag you're clean. I have a whole video on it. I'm going to link it as one of the end videos here. It's going to be at the top. So if you don't know how to keep a banger clean, check out that video. And if you do know how to keep your banger clean, check out the other video. Doing a close up, guys. Oh my god. Tastes so good. And that's the video, you guys. This is my new $1,600 piece. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Jeff. Peace.